all right now that we have cleaned up the app and if we go young start it should be asking me to run it on 3001 here it is it's all blank now we have nothing here by default so i'm just gonna close the app and now we will just discuss about how react actually works behind the scene and how the all the ui component get rendered to the dom so if you already know this stuff guys you can skip this video but i am making this video for those who are new to react and for the beginners who are trying to uh, understand the core concept of react so i will discuss about this so if you have seen my previous video from here we have cleaned up and we have removed all the unnecessary and unwanted code and this is what we have ended up with we have just one source file app.tsx and an index.tsx and in our public folder we have the index.html file which is responsible for rendering these source files here so if we have a look at this we have got a div here with the id root so this root id is actually behind everything that we get to see on the web page here so how that works if you go to the index.tsx file you can see here we have react dom create root function and this function is called with the element that has the id root and in the html document as its argument so you can see we have here this as the argument here so if we go back to this this actually creates a root container for the react application so in the provided code here uh, you can see that the root variable now holds a reference to this root container so this whole thing would be rendered here and whatever inside the index.tsx what is inside it we have app and what's root.render doing here so the root.render function is called with the gsx code inside it so if you don't know what i mean by gsx code you see this this is what we call gsx so what is gsx gsx is a syntax extension for javascript that allows us to write html uh, like code in your react component so it's not html it looks like html but it's gsx and in gsx we use uh, this notation that our element has to start with a capital that are unlike we can still use h1 tags here if we want to but then it has to be inside this yeah so but when we cre create our custom um, component and everything they have to start with a capital letter reason being why our component name should be capital so it can differentiate between the html elements and tags and the component so for example if you name something your component that matches an html element so that's gonna clash so we always have to write our component uh, names with a capital letter so this is how the app is getting rendered everything happening inside the app will be rendered inside index.tsx and then in this index.tsx file will pass it to the root and that root will be rendered on the DOM so that's how it works and let's have a look at the strict mode here so what is the strict mode doing so basically this is this component is also used to enable strict mode uh, strict mode activate additional checks and warnings like during development to ensure best practices and catch potential issues early so we can see like the errors in terminal if we have misspelled anything or if we are not importing any modules and finally then we have the app so app component is rendered inside the strict mode this means that the app component is the root component uh, of the root uh, of the react application and it will be the starting point for rendering the entire ui so if you don't know what i mean this app component will be the starting point for rendering everything you are going to create inside this project okay now that we have already had a look at how react works behind the scene we are just gonna have a look at with the example how app component is actually behind rendering other component 
So first of all, I'm just going to start creating the folders as well. And then we'll have a look at how that works in a minute. So first folder is uh, going to be component components. And guys, this component components, this, this uh, folder is always there in any react project you came across or you will come across in in your life you will see that components folder is always there lots of lots of developers use this and i'm pretty sure everybody uses this because all your reusable components goes inside this folder and we're gonna create a folder called pages and that's another one if your app has pages you should create a pages <coughs> folder where you can put your folder in my case i have one two three four pages home tv shows so i will add them inside this and the next folder we're going to create is assets so if you have like images in your um, project i only have like three images which are the cover images except the home page but everything else is coming from the database so if you have like images icons logos you can uh, store them into the asset folder and you can access them from there one more folder is going to be styles so this is going to be a style uh, containing folder like your css files uh, but in our case we will be using the styled component so it will be module.ts files uh, it's pretty much the same approach like how you have your javascript html code and then you have a css folder with css files like home.css about.css and all that and one last folder for this project at least uh, we're gonna have modules dot not dot it's a folder so modules in this folder we will be uh, creating files that will store api links and a context provider as well so we can reuse the app everywhere and now let's just go ahead and have a look at how actually things get rendered because we are still rendering a blank page there's nothing here and once again guys if you already know this stuff so i know lots of you may already know this Please skip this video and go to the next part where I'm actually started uh, creating the header section. But I am making this for all my fellow learners who are new to React and who are just fresh uh, to TypeScript. And I mean, these are just React concepts for now. So I want to show them the basics of the basics of React, how things actually works in React, rather than just memorizing and looking at the code. So let's go ahead and look at this. how actually another component get rendered so we have app component here h1 hello i am the app file so you can see this is happening in real time hello i'm the app and now we want to go into component folder we're going to create a new file and we're going to name it now playing actually we're gonna name it example.tsx why tsx because we are using typescript if you were in javascript i think you would use js or jsx but for t typescript we use tsx and uh, we're gonna press enter also if you're using like a uh, longer name you should follow a uh, camel case notation so example app dot tsx right and guys this is how you create a new component in react or new file you can say that you're gonna work with and then how do we actually start working on this we start with importing the react import react from react and then actually it shouldn't be there and then you come to bottom you declare your functional component because we will be working with functional component const and name of your example example app a again this could be any name you like but to keep things tidy and nice so you don't get confused you should always name it as your file name and then the arrow function and inside this we have a return statement so it always returns something if it's a tsx file it should return something and the return statement should be wrapped inside the react fragment what do i mean by react fragment is this react dot fragment this is how you basically write fragment 
so all the code inside this will be wrapped but there's another way of doing this you can either just write fragment and over here you can import it from there and you can see and there's another shortcut of doing this you don't even need this you can just simply remove everything and leave it as it is so empty so this and this this is also known as react fragment so everything inside your um, return statement should be inside fragment or a div so you can also wrap it inside a div but sometimes there are cases when you have multiple divs so you get confused so always try to keep things inside the fragments and all your code can go inside there so if i say um, home class and like this and then you can have another class section so let's delete that and now that we have return statement with fragment in this we are going to write an h1 tag i i and the example uh, component and then we're going to have a p tag lorem 10 so if you don't know what lorem 10 is it's just a dummy text that you want to display sometimes for example it's been used by developer for putting some dummy uh, paragraph or anything that he, if you don't have anything to write you can just use lorem ipsum and then you can provide it a value so if you go ahead and do lorem 100 it will write a big ass paragraph and looks like my max battery is low let me just put it to charging okay then what we can do here as you can see the example app is still crying because it says it's declared but its value is never read so why is that because right now this component is not complete until we actually export it so if we do not export it this component is useless so we cannot import it any way we want to use it so we have to do export default so default and the name of your example app like i said you can rename it to anything let's say you want to name it test but then you have to export it as test but we're gonna keep it simple we always try to keep it matching with your file name so you don't get confused and now that we have this component and on site the app we still rendering hello i am this app file here now let's we go down we are gonna import the example example app here and remember guys the component that we render and call in another component it always a self-closing tag so now you can see that it's still crying because i haven't imported it so i have exported it from here now this export is responsible for this import import example app from component so that happened with my vs code intelligence i'll just do it again manually import example app from we are gonna go one back as you can see we have so many folders here but we are targeting the component folder because that's where our file is component slash and it already know that i have this file so if i have this before this we have just this text rendering now we're gonna have everything inside this component rendering below the h1 tag so let's go ahead and look there it is i am the example app component and if we get rid of the h1 from here then it will just render that hi i am the example app component so there it is guys this is how uh, you render another component um, to a react app uh, we, you can also render component within component so if for example if we go new file test.tsx and i'm not gonna do import statement i have installed this snippet if you guys like you can it's called the simple react snippet this will make your life easier so you know like how i declared this import react and all this function what i can do here with this help of this snippet is react arrow function component export and press enter so they already have a component and what we're gonna do is write an h1 tag here as well 
I am the code component. And now, like I said, we can render component within component, but I will show you if we're gonna render multiple component, what we will do like this test. It's already imp imported up there. And I am the third component. And now if we do not wanna import it here, we can actually not that undo. We can go to example. We will import it up here. Test. And you can see test is being imported over here. You can see that I'm importing it from component slash example over here. I'm only doing dot slash because it's in the same directory here. So if you go back and we can see hi, I am the example app component. I am the third component. So now this text is rendering through the example app component because I am rendering that component here and then this whole component whatever within this component get rendered to the app so that's how this thing works and now thank you so much for watching this video and I will move on to the next part and we will start creating the header and we're also going to install some libraries which we will talk about in the next video thank you so much for watching this let's move on to the next part